Hi Keto fam, welcome back to my channel. I realised that I haven't done a tea with tea and I actually really have tea in it this time. I haven't done one since we left Cork. When I say we, I mean my family, not you and I. But, well technically you've come with me. But anyway, I haven't done a tea with tea since I left Cork. And I want to do one today um, just because I wanted to have a, a bit of a chatty video and just let you know where things are. So if you've been keeping up with me, you'll know that I've started this 30 day challenge um, and I hope to make a video every day. If I don't, it's not because I haven't, um, I have had carbs or I've had something sweet and I want to hide it for you. If I, if I have something sweet, you guys are going to know all about it because I want you to see what it's really like. Um, I'm not one of these ketoers who will just show you the good, I'll show you the bad too. Um, I show you the struggles, I talk about my difficulties with weight loss, the psychological part of it, the, the physical part of it, the emotional part of it, the mental part of it, it's just, it's all one big package and you can't do anything in isolation when it comes to this journey, especially if you've been overweight for a very long time or um, you've just got a lot of weight to lose, so much psychological and emotional stuff in there that it's just not possible to separate them. Um, so I'm very open about, about that with you guys but today I just wanted to kind of have a tea with tea chatty video just about motivation and where I get my motivation from and how you can find your motivation too so obviously being as heavy as I was it was a good motivation for me I, I was always motivated to lose weight in that I was absolutely completely and utterly miserable being fat I don't need to explain it to you if you've been there, if you haven't been there, it's mental, emotional, physical exhaustion, pain, discomfort, um, humiliation, um, abuse by strangers on the street. It's just everything is just uh, a motivator to lose the weight because if you lose the weight and you become slim, then you almost become invisible. Um, the, everything has a fat filter on it. People prejudge you. Um, I always felt that I was just to be lazy and stupid actually. <laughs> I've been treated like I'm absolutely stupid by people who assume that because I'm fat, I'm not a productive member of society. So all these things really, every day, they do two things. They make you really, really want to not be fat anymore but conversely they make you want to eat because you need comfort and it's round and round and round and round it's like a merry-go-round so finding the motivation can be easy but it's your attitude that keeps you going so once you get on the weight loss journey and you see results it can be easy enough to keep motivated but as soon as you get tempted by something then then that's really when you need your motivation um, to, to step up and to really come between you and that temptation. I find that a lot of people, including myself, have made excuses and there's almost like this fear of success because when you're fat, you, it's almost like you have this physical shield so it stops you from um, from doing things that scare you, from being in situations that scare you, you use it as an excuse. And it's all it all comes down to fear. So what I did was changed what my definition of fear was. So instead of being fearful of being out in social situations and putting myself out there and um, experiencing new things, instead of that I changed my fear to be one of being fat forever or from um being afraid of dying young or being afraid of getting some illness, being afraid of not being able to look after my family. That's where the fear came from. And it was always there. But what I did was I used that as my motivation because people will do more to avoid fear than they will to pursue pleasure because we're afraid of feeling pain. So by using that approach, I was able to really keep myself motivated as time has gone on, it's not as easy to continue the motivation, especially when you've been plateaued for as long as I have. I'm coming up on a year and a half plateau. Um, and I've tried, half-assed, tried numerous ways 
Um, but there's a good reason why we plateau and I'll, I will do another video on it. I know I did one before, but I've learned some new science that, that I want to do um, a new video on. Um, there's never going to be a right time to do it. Wait until Monday, wait until this holiday's over, wait until my birthday's over, wait until I go on vacation. There's never going to be a right time. And if you start now, you're already going to be ahead of everybody else who's waiting until Monday or waiting until their holiday's finished, waiting until they finish their vacation. So don't use that as an excuse because they're literally, like having children, there's literally never the perfect time. Um, one thing that helped keep me motivated was not trying to do everything in one go. Mentally, the way I talked to myself about it was that I was giving up sugar. That's it, just one thing. That's all I was doing was giving up sugar. Um, and that attitude really helped me not get overwhelmed by everything that I was doing, um, the big changes that I was making, the way I looked at it instead of saying, well, I'm changing my diet, I'm changing my diet, I'm changing my fat, I'm changing my protein, and I'm just quitting out sugar. That's it, in all its forms, just cutting out sugar. You need to make sure that you prioritize yourself. Um, that's a big thing, because if you are prioritizing your spouse, your partner, your family, your children, you're never gonna put yourself first enough to really stay on track, because if you think of it this way, um, your family all want to go to McDonald's and you really don't want to because you know you'll be hugely tempted by a Big Mac or whatever it is. Um, it's okay to say to your family, look guys, I need to put myself here first. I need you not to go to McDonald's for me. Now for, for mothers out there and for anybody who's a carer or in charge of running a household, regardless of what your situation is, you don't necessarily have to be a mother. But that's really hard to do because in a caring situation, regardless of the, the setup, you always want the best for the people that, that you love and the people that you're looking out for. But it's absolutely okay to say to them, this time I need to put myself first, so I'd like you guys to appreciate and respect that I need this to be this way. And that's absolutely fine. When you first start, you're going to be striving for perfection, but really, when it comes to keto, there's no such thing as perfect because everybody's different. So you need to find out what works for you and not try and reach perfection. Like I tell everybody who asks me about um, ratios and macros, just count carbs at the start. Say to yourself, again, I'm just giving up sugar, so I'm gonna have a maximum of 20 grams a day, that's it. And it really can be that simple. And that simplification can help you not get overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information that there is and, and the perceived efforts it takes to do keto. Yes, there are things you have to be careful of, like keeping your electrolytes in balance, but boy, you're gonna know if your electrolytes are not balanced because you're gonna feel really bad. And then a simple solution then is just to have some good quality rock salt. Make things as simple as possible for yourself and it's a really good way to ensure that you're gonna keep going. Lastly, do not compare yourself to anybody else because everybody's journey is completely individual. You lost 50 pounds in a month or you lost 100 pounds in a year or you lost 10 pounds your first week. Yes, those people did that. You may not, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not doing something right or you're not doing keto right or you're failing in some way. It's not like that. Your journey is your journey and it's yours alone. And comparison is the thief of joy. Absolutely. You may not have dropped 10 pounds in the first month, but you dropped a dress size. And somebody else might have dropped 20 pounds but stayed the same size in their clothes and really be envious of you. So don't compare your journey to anybody else's. Look after your own journey. Keep an eye on the weight on the scale, but don't prioritize it. Take photographs of yourself, take measurements, track those non-scale victories, because they're yours, they belong to you. And those things will help keep you motivated in times when it becomes really difficult. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for stopping by. Give a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.